In this presentation, I'm going to take you through a range of artists who might give you some inspiration for your projects. Jean-Claude and Christo are two famous artists, well known for being a duo and famous for their large scale pieces that involve wrapping landmark buildings and landscapes in huge amounts of fabric or by creating temporary structures from colourful oil barrels. Despite the best efforts of critics to ascribe specific meaning to their work, the artists always insisted that their pieces are simply about experiencing the artwork in the moment, in the context of its environment. What I'd like you to try is to produce an attractive research page based on these artists. Watch the video I've uploaded. Why do they wrap up the landmarks? Who do you think owns the art? What is your opinion? And maybe you could even try wrapping up bricks or a small part of your home and take photographs of that. Choose a landmark, find photos or take photos and what you could do is you could use collage to try and pretend that you have wrapped that part of the building. You could then do a drawing of that, keeping close attention to your tone and shading. Wrap an object in fabric or newspaper and bind it with string. Take photographs of it, draw it carefully with all your tonal range. The next artist that we're going to look at is Rachel Whiteread. She explores negative space and really, really looks at different parts of buildings and structures and creates really beautiful forms through the technique of casting. Please do an artist research on her if you choose her as your artist reference. Think about these questions. What does she do? What is the significance of negative space? How does her work make you think about internal spaces differently? What materials does she use to make her work? And how could you explore internal spaces in your work? What you could try and do is do some 3D drawings. Think about the hidden sections of your house, the cupboard under the stairs, underneath your kitchen sink, the bath unit, door or window frames. Try and, visual and visualize the space as solid and draw it in three dimensions. Something that would be really fun for you to try and explore negative space is by using things that you may already have at home. For example, ice or jelly. Think of items that have interesting internal or negative space and cast your object in either ice or jelly and record it in photographs. One of my favourite artists is Jennifer Collier. She is a textile artist who uses fabric and mostly paper to create domestic objects such as shoes, gloves, cameras, typewriters, anything that you might think of. She has tried to recreate it using wax and also bits of old card. You could even try and create your own piece like this one of baby shoes. I was thinking that you might like to explore the theme of food through using techniques like Jennifer Collier. Think about creating food objects using things that you may already have at home. For example, cardboard or coloured paper. Here we have a selection of pieces using simple card and cutting techniques. Join with PVA glue and layer up your piece to make it look as realistic as possible. The final artist that we're going to look at is Andy Goldsworthy. He is a land art artist who is very famous for his range of colourful and imaginative pieces in a variety of different areas. It is site specific, so whether it is icy or whether it's a summer's day, Andy Goldsworthy uses what he has around him to make his sculptures. If you're going to use him as an artist's research, think about what influences him. How does he create his artwork? 
What are the dominant shapes in his work? And what is the effect of nature being controlled? Can any of you think of the word that we used in year nine to describe his work? It begins with A. How does Andy Goldsworthy use colour? And what is the impact of some of his work being temporary? Choose three of his pieces and draw them. You can be experimental with your marks. Focus on the visual element of shape, repetition and contrast and three dimensionality. Fill your double page with your sketches. You might even like to try and recreate your own. You could use ice, you could use leaves or stone. You could try and be as creative as possible. Another artist uses string installations. These are really, really creative and imaginative structures that really make us think about light and think about the world that we live in by really making different patterns by using string in unusual places. Do a research page on the two string artists. They fill a space with string. How does that change the space? How do both their approaches differ? Think about the role that maths has in art. What is the impact of the size and scale of their work? And how does this kind of art talk about humans controlling their environment? You might like to do two drawings. First, use a ruler and a method to come up with a geometric pa pattern and try and create repetitive lines. Use the video to help support your work. The second idea would be using random marks to do a drawing that is a tangle or a web. Think about the density, the distribution of the lines and the intensity of them. Finally then, you could try some string art. You could do this by using photographs from outside to help you get some inspiration. You could use a paper plate or you could use a piece of cardboard and you could create lots of geometric patterns on these pieces. Or if you had time, you could try and create your own string ornament or try and weave string or yarn around a chair or table legs. Photograph your work and the process of it. Please take inspiration from one of these artists to help you with your work. Photograph your work and upload it to Google Classroom. Good luck and thank you.